Hey there and welcome and thank you for joining me for this video about forgotten professions. First off, I should probably explain a little bit about what these videos are about since uh, the word forgotten may sound a little bit drastic or dramatic. And basically what we're looking at is a couple of secondary professions that I believe deserve a little bit more love from the casual player. And today we're gonna have a look at cooking. So why? Why would I spend my time on something as mundane as cooking? Well, allow me to sketch a scenario for you. Let's say you just started playing this level 5 warrior a couple of hours ago and now you're pleasantly walking around in Durotar. Then, in typical Durotar fashion, a scorpion starts to claw the crap out of you. Of course, it doesn't simply harass you and poison you while you simply try to go about your daily business, but also the only loot is this horrible looking scorpion sticker. And what kind of deranged lunatic puts a scorpion stinger in their backpack, right? Well, from now on, with cooking, you do. Because there's a recipe for it. Scorpit Surprise is true Razor Hill cuisine, with fresh ingredients gathered from the region and a uh, big chance to poison you if you bite on the wrong bit. So, are orcs and trolls the only ones who can get a sort of early game regional recipe? Nah, don't worry about it. For example, the Night Elves, they have this quest called Recipe of the Kaldore, which gives you a cooking recipe. So you can make these amazing spider kebabs out of, I think, broken spider legs? And just like this recipe here at this vendor in Bloodhoof, you can pretty much find different regional recipes for uh, different starting areas anywhere. So is there anything else to be excited about? Why yes actually, and we already touched upon it a little bit when discussing that Keldore spider kebab recipe. Namely, quests to get recipes. I think that's actually a really cool thing, because now you can get experience, get a reward, get a cooking recipe, and it feels more rewarding than when you just randomly pick it up. Let's also have a look at if there's a couple of small benefits to using cooking as a secondary profession. Of course, I already mentioned that you can turn apparent trash into something quasi-edible, like uh, <laughs> with the scorpion stinger at the start of this video, and that's also really useful if you start combining certain professions with cooking. So for example, you pick skinning, you pick leatherworking, you pick cooking, and then as you walk around and you farm up on animals to get your skinning and your leatherworking leveled, you also get to level up your cooking. And that's something I think I can recommend to pretty much anyone, is the way you can combine cooking with leatherworking and skinning, and it feels really fulfilling to just go out into a forest somewhere or near a river somewhere. You just fight wild animals uh, from which you get leather, you get skinning experience, you get leveling experience and you get items that you can use for both leatherworking and cooking. It feels really rewarding to just 
get so many things out of one thing. Add to that the uh, really relaxing World of Warcraft background music, and the sounds from the birds, and the whistling wind, and you have this really relaxing magical experience just by doing a couple of professions. Another small benefit raising the happiness of your pet. And maybe some of you are thinking, well, I'm not a hunter. I don't have pets, so what's the use? Well, don't just take my pet's word for it. Just look at how happy my character looks after he munches down a steak. And of course, I know it's a minor buff, but well fed can still get you. A little bit extra stats which I think is nice especially if like me you like to create new characters and do some solo play and you find out that you might want to have them have some survivability so maybe some extra healing from first aid or from alchemy maybe some healing in between fights from food and so all small little buffs help in my opinion couple cool more things to mention about cooking before I go. Once you're ready to start your artisan cooking, there will be another specialized cooking quest, which I personally think is really cool. I won't spoil anything just yet, but just trust me when I say you'll have a blast doing all kinds of chores for this goblin right here. Secondly, you can combine your cooking with fishing to make your experience even more relaxing. And lastly, if you ever feel like you're lacking any cooking recipes on the Alliance side, go to Stormwind to the Pig and Whistle Inn and find this guy named Kendor. I mean, he's like World of Warcraft 24 Kitchen. Right, well, that's it for me for now. Thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll consider giving cooking a try sometime.